I'm gonna pretend to be smart in this video. Thus, the lab coat. Calculating the velocity of a projectile takes a special device known as a ballistic chronograph. Not to be confused with like chronograph watches. Completely different thing. I don't know why they have the same name. I should look that up before starting this. This particular device costs $100. And apparently a lot of people including myself, haven't wanted to spend the hundred dollars, so we're left not being able to know exactly how fast our DIY potato guns or air guns or slingshot rifles shoot. And that's frustrating. So today, I'm going to be going through, in excruciating detail, how to simply and easily calculate the exact velocity of your projectiles as well as your kinetic energy. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how to do all that with just the materials and tools you have readily available to you at home where you are right now. First of all, how does a ballistic chronograph work? Well, it's essentially a computer with two sensors placed a certain distance apart. You shoot your projectile over those two highly sensitive sensors and the computer records how long it takes to pass from one sensor to the other. Say the sensors are a foot apart from each other and it measures that it takes, say, a second to pass from one sensor to the other. The computer then spits out the number, which is one foot per second or one cup of tea per colonized nation for you metric users. This principle of measuring the amount of time it takes for your projectile to pass between two markers is pretty easy to replicate with household items. There's a few different methods of doing that, which I shall enumerate. Method numero uno, slow motion video with your iPhone camera. Now this wasn't possible that many years ago. However, today in the future, in 2021, everybody has a high speed video camera in their pocket. It's called a smartphone. This beautiful black baby is my iPhone 8. And I, I know it's a few years old. It'll shoot high speed video up to 240 frames per second. That is eight times slower than normal video playback and more than fast enough for most anything you will create in your garage. Now iPhones give you the exact number of frames it's shooting. I don't have an Android, but I did check on one of my friend's phone and it just told you what fraction of normal speed it shot at. As in like one quarter of normal speed, half normal speed, one eighth normal speed, you get the picture. Just so you know and don't have to figure it out, one eighth normal speed is 240 frames per second. One quarter normal speed is 100 and 20 frames per second. Stop, stop, stop asking, I hear you. What on earth is a frame per second? I'll tell you. Remember, a video is nothing more than a ton of still images strung together, like a flip book. You flip through that flip book quickly enough and it tricks your brain into thinking the individual pictures are moving. The frame rate is how many still images are strung together to create that final video. Most videos and movies today are shot on 24 to 30 frames per second, roughly. It's a speed that seems fluid to our eye. Right now I'm recording at 30 frames per second. It just seems natural. Much less than 24 frames per second and the footage starts to seem choppy. It's like a flip book with not enough pages in it. That's actually why old silent movies always look off. It's because they were often shot in 15 or 20 frames per second and then sped up and so they seem like they're all in fast motion. Now if we have a video that's shot at 30 frames per second and we try to slow it down, suddenly it gets all choppy. That's because we don't have enough images. We don't have enough information. It's like flipping through a flip book too slowly. We don't have enough frames there. So when we want to film slow motion, we up the frame rate. If I shoot myself at 60 frames per second, then I have enough frames to slow it down by 50% play it back at 30 frames a second, and I'm now in slow motion, but I have enough frames there to make it oh so smooth. Buttery smooth. I think we got distracted. What was I talking about? So, I'll take my phone and set it to shoot slow motion. I'll go into settings and change the resolution to record slow-mo at 240 frames a second. Then I'm gonna rig it up at a wide angle to see both myself and the target I'm shooting at in the same frame. I then hit record and record in glorious slow motion as I fire into the target. 50 feet away.
Booyah. Now we'll take that footage and put it into an editor that will allow you to scrub through frame by frame. And then we simply count the number of frames it takes for the projectile to impact the target. There's the kind of stupid thing. Your phone is recording in full 240 frames per second. However, to make it easier for the user, it plays it back at 30 frames per second instead of in real time. Because the common person wants to have it automatically slow down for them. They don't want to have to stick it in a software and slow down the footage manually. It just does it automatically. And I've looked into it and the phone slows it down to 30 frames a second. Exactly. So, let's go ahead and count the frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 88 frames! In case you were wondering, no, you cannot just do this in the Photos app on your phone. It will not work. Don't bother trying. Basically, it does not give me all the frames. It way simplifies it. You have to get it up in an editor to do that. So, just go ahead and download iMovie onto your iPhone. I assume it works on Android. I don't know. If you do this on a computer with an editing software, you're going to need to make sure that the timeline's frame rate is set to match the frame rate you took the video in. Otherwise, it'll show you too many frames or too few frames. If you shot it on your phone at 240 frames per second and then your phone automatically slows that down to 30 frames a second, make sure to set your timeline to 30 frames a second. If you shot it in 60 frames a second, set your timeline to 60. Both Mac and PC come with their own very simple bare bones editing software. For Macs it's called iMovie and for Windows it's called just punch in your search video editor. It'll come up. It's super simple, but it will work for this. Or if you want to download something more advanced off the internet, there's a free version of PowerDirector, which is pretty good, and also DaVinci Resolve is 100% free, and it's super, super advanced good. That's actually what I use to edit these videos. I'll have links in the description down below. Now we can do the math. The feet per second equals the distance divided by the number of frames you counted divided divided by the frame rate. So in our case, the distance is 50 feet. The number of frames we counted were 88, and the frame rate was 240 frames per second. And it's just simple division. 88 divided by 240 equals 0 0.36. 50 divided by 0 0.36 equals 138 feet per second. Ain't that easy? Now I know what you're thinking, that's cool and all, but I can't use that to figure out what my like firearm shoots like you know an actual rifle because it just shoots too fast actually theoretically you can I haven't tried it but theoretically you can you just need to make the distance you're shooting really far and use a reactive target that will pick up really big on camera Method number two, audio spikes. This method works by measuring the distance between you and your target like usual, but then recording just the sound of the shot. You'll get spikes in the audio when you fire and when you impact that target, and then just measure the amount of time it took between those two spikes. This method is easiest to do with slower moving projectiles. Although theoretically, this should be able to work up to supersonic, because obviously if you're breaking the sound barrier with your projectile, you're not gonna get an accurate reading. All you're gonna need is a smartphone and a audio editing software. Macs come with a great one already installed called GarageBand, and for PCs, you can download one for free. It's in the description down below, called Audacity. So I'm gonna measure out a distance of 100 feet. I'm gonna take my phone, get out the voice recording app or the voice memos app, hit record, and then I'm gonna set the phone in the middle between me and the target. That's because of the speed of sound. If we were to put the phone right next to me, it would instantly pick up the sound of the gun firing. However, it would take longer for the sound of the impact to travel all the way back to the phone. Whereas if we place the phone in the exact center, it takes the same amount of time for the sound of the firing and impact to travel back to the phone. The two distances cancel each other out. You get the exact time of firing and impact. It's a little bit unintuitive, but trust me, that's exactly how it works. Maybe if one of you in the comments wants to do the math, I ain't got time in this video. Hopefully I don't hit my phone. That would suck.
Then we'll import the audio into Audacity, GarageBand, whatever your audio editing program of choice is. We'll measure exactly on the tip of that spike firing, spike of impact. It'll tell you what fraction of a second it is. 0 0.649 seconds. The formula for this one is super simple. It's literally just distance divided by time. We know the distance, of course. All you gotta do is divide that by 0 0.649 seconds. Equals 154 feet per second. Feet per feet per feet per feet per. You can't actually say the letter P with something in your mouth. Projectile energy. In my last video, of course, we pitted the fabulous, fabulous against Fort in the Woods tool ball cannon. Mine won the challenge for aesthetics and distance categories, however, the damage category was kind of a toss-up. See, my ballista fires big, pointy, long darts. Mine obviously penetrated farther, but theirs left bigger holes, even though it would take a few hits to punch through. It's like comparing apples to oranges, like how exactly do you do that? I'll tell you how. Kinetic energy. See, it's not just as simple as knowing the pure velocity. You also gotta take into account the projectile's weight. I mean, what would you rather get hit by? A Nerf dart traveling at 50 miles per hour, or a semi-truck traveling at 50 miles per hour? <laughs> There's a large difference of momentum right there. A projectile's kinetic energy is a product of both its velocity and its mass. To calculate it, you just have to know how fast your projectile is moving and how much it weighs. The formula for kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. Now, apologies, my American brethren, but this equation only works in metric units, so you're gonna have to do some conversions. I know we like to measure everything in bald eagles per Sasquatch, but apparently the scientific community thinks it's better to measure in metric. The mass needs to be in kilograms, the velocity needs to be in meters per second, and you're gonna get the answer in joules. So my ballista shoots its dart at 107 feet per second. The dart weighs 7.8 ounces. After, of course, converting that into metric units, we do the conversion, which you'll have to imagine because I'm not going to do it for you right now because you don't need to know because you've got a good imagination, comes out to 117 joules or 86 foot-pounds of energy. Fort in the Woods pool ball cannon, on the other hand, fires a 1.76 ounce mini pool ball at 95 feet per second, which works out to 20 joules. So basically... I'm majorly the winner. And just to put those numbers into perspective for you, a 9mm handgun's average kinetic energy is 540 joules. A 22 caliber gun shoots roughly 176 joules, and this old 40 pound compound bow shoots 40 joules. Now, I know what you're saying, I hear you, I'm with you. You want a quick and easy way of comparing a couple projectiles energy together without having to do a bunch of stupid math. As an also lazy person, I've got you there too. Introducing the ballistic pendulum. <laughs> This is my ballistic pendulum. It is a thick piece of wood suspended at the top. That's where your hinge is. And it will swing back and forth when it is hit. Now you can do a couple different things with this. Number one, you can very simply and unscientifically figure out which of your projectile launchers deliver more kinetic energy than the other just by observing how high it swings. Number two, you can get real complicated by actually accurately measuring exactly how high it swings with a slow-mo camera and this piece of poster board with measurements drawn on it. First off, I wanna find out which of these delivers more kinetic energy, the pellet gun or my slingshot rifle. So obviously, it's a slingshot rifle. But if you want to go more complicated, if you're one of those smart people 
You can also use the ballistic pendulum to calculate velocity. Also, ballistic pendulums have an advantage over the other methods when you're shooting very, very fast projectiles. Say like I wanted to shoot my hunting rifle. That bullet is definitely way too small to actually see on camera. However, after it impacts that pendulum, the pendulum itself is definitely going to be moving slow enough to capture on camera. All you have to do is figure out a way to measure the pendulum's rise after it's hit, and using that and the weight of the projectile, you can calculate the rest. Here is the formula. Now here's something I didn't mention before. To do it accurately, you want the projectile to embed itself into the ballistic pendulum. The way this calculation works, you need the conservation of mass or something or other really scientific. Science. If you're curious about the exact math and physics behind why that formula works, you're just gonna have to Google ballistic pendulum because if I tried to explain that, my brain would explode and I would be here for the next two days. I don't know which would come first. That's all I got for you. Actually, have you ever wanted to see a Nerf dart fire from a shotgun?